Okay, uh, glad to be here. I'm Da Yuan Huang from National Jiao Tong University. And uh, today I would like to introduce you Auto Freeze, a software prototyping tool that provides auto complete features for designing and developing virtual breadboard circuits. So, this project has been done by researchers from National Jiao Tong University, Douglas College, National Taiwan University, University of Calgary, and Taiwan Tech. Unfortunately, the first author, uh, Ruo Yulo, cannot be here with us owing to some visa issues. So, I'm the second author. And the author includes Ruo Yulo, Da Yuan Huang, and Zhi Shen Guo, Zheng Guo Sun, Jun Gong, uh, who presented the fabrication technology uh, before, and Teddy Sai, Xin Dong Yang, and Bing Yu Chen. So, the motivation is like this. As an HCI researcher, we often need to build up our own hardware devices, right? I remember my first Arduino project was a really simple one, completing an LED circuit. But uh, I had limited knowledge about the circuit design, so I usually made low-level mistakes. For example, I usually forgot to add a resistor to protect my LED circuit, and as a result, I burned out so many LEDs and spent tons of time to fix the bug. So this is somewhat embarrassing, but uh, even today when I try to build our own hardware devices, I still make those mistakes. So when I was a novice, I often did not know how to complete an electronic component. I don't remember the data sheets. I didn't have much experiences to utilize IC modules or sensor modules. And um, most of the time, the wiring connections just drove me crazy. So however, I found myself not alone. Previous works have suggested that for novices or even experts, making errors seems to be inevitable. So prototyping process sometimes can be time consuming. Fortunately, there have been many circuit debugging tools. For example, current Vs can sense and visualize the current flow. And uh, current sense can sense the location and the type of the electronic components. So other research also uh, proposed integrating hardware and software interfaces to facilitate debugging breadboard circuits. This is uh, amazing, right? In, a, in analogy with programming, it's like we finally have a tool to debug runtime errors after we compile the code. But uh, before entering the debugging phase, a novice like me might already struggle during the design phase. Um, we may spend lots of time to learn the correct usage of a component. Uh, for example, I didn't know the motor should better be wired to an edge bridge module. So at that time, our research team raised a very simple question. Uh, how can we reduce circuit design errors and help users to facilitate their designs? In analogy with programming again, can we facilitate the code design phase? So in this paper, we designed and implemented um, autocomplete features for our prototyping tool. Autocomplete has been widely used in web search, programming, and many other applications. It can help users to reduce errors and even build confidence during the design. So there have been some handy circuit design tools, for example, VBB or Freezing. For me, they are like the code editors for circuit prototyping. Users can drag and drop an electronic component on the virtual breadboard and weld them virtually. Uh, although the interface is intuitive, we still need to manually edit the electronic components and complete the wires, which again can be error prone and time consuming. So this is auto free. As you can see in the video, when the user inserts a component into the virtual breadboard, the system automatically displays a list of suggestions. And the users can complete or extend the design based on the suggestions, which reduces their time and effort. In another example, when we insert a tricolor LED, the system reminds us that three resistors are needed. As a result, the user is less likely to miss the resistors. We don't need to read the data sheet schematic to know that. So now I need to um, define two important terms in this paper, components and modules. So components are electronic components. I'll introduce you later. A module is a functional circuit defined by data sheets of a component. A module should work if we wire it to a power source. For example, um, this is a photocell module, and it is composed of a photocell and a resistor. And the, the Arduino is used to power the module, obviously. So in this example, the photocell and the resistor are the components. So we, we categorized four types of components in this paper. The basic component represents primitive electronic components, such as resistors, capacitors, and others. And I.O. components include common input devices, sensors, and output devices. They are usually co connected with basic components to function properly, such as an LED and a resistor. IC components are difficult to use for novices. 
Our system provides autocomplete suggestions based on the data sheet schematics. And uh, finally, microcontroller units and batteries are, pro are provided to IO or IC components as auto autocomplete auto suggestions. So based on this, uh, we finally propose four types of autocomplete suggestions, which are module completion, module to module completion, wire connection completion, and uh, microcontroller unit or battery completion. So this is uh, module completion. When inserting the component, our system suggests how to complete the component based on the data sheets schematics. And uh, this is another example showing how an LED is completed. After a module is completed, the system suggests other modules that could be used together. For example, the system can suggest an edge bridge chip to a, for a DC motor. If a suggested module is accepted by the user, the system suggests the wirings between them. So the chip should cross the bar, but uh, it's okay. And our system also provides suggestions to complete wire connections if the user connects the first wire between the two modules, like this. Finally, to complete the module, the system can also suggest a battery or a microcontroller unit to power the circuit. So this is a walkthrough example. If you want to implement a device that allows you, if you are too close to something, you can drag and drop a speaker component to the breadboard at first. Uh, and then learn how to complete the speaker and check out how to wire the module to an Arduino. Check out related online source projects. Learn how to complete the wire connections. And with similar manners, you can complete the whole circuit design. So the following is the implementation. We developed free, auto freeze on freezing because it's an open source platform backed up by a large community. Our system contains a database and a user interface integrated with Freezing. So we included over 4,000 project parts from the Freezing software and its online project hub. So this is an, a Freezing project web page. Usually each project contains one Freezing project file. The project file can be exported as an XML file, and uh, we analyze each file and store it to a database. For example, we found a schematic from the data sheet of a component. We then search if the schematic existed in the 4,000 projects. If yes, we, rec uh, we recorded its frequency. So maybe the frequency of the module A is 70% and is 30% for the module B. Uh, based on the analysis results, the related project and their frequencies will be displayed in a descending order. Also, after identifying all the modules in the database, we were able to understand how the modules were connected to each other. Uh, this information was stored in the database for providing suggestions for module-to-module uh, -module completion and wire connection completion. And the analysis also led us to know how to connect a module to a microcontroller unit or a power source. So for every autocomplete suggestions, we also provide the links to source project that utilize the same suggestion so that the user can see a reason why a suggestion was made by our system. So we conducted a study to evaluate the usability of our system. We recruited 16 participants, eight novices and eight experts, and showed them how to uh, virtually create the, their design and by, uh, with the help of uh, auto-freeze and freezing interfaces. For each interface, the participants should complete two projects, including one simple project and one complex project. The project were chosen from the Arduino official website or Arduino Project Hub. So, for example, the low complexity circuit in involved modules of uh, simple components. The first is the most code communication. As you can see, it has two push buttons. Uh, there's an LCD blinks when a button is pressed, and uh, the most code is displayed using the piezo speaker. So, 
Before a participant started the design, we provided them the descriptions and requirements of the circuit without telling them how to do it in an exact way. We also provide them a tool set that they could use for the projects. The list includes some distractor components. During the study, participants could access online resources to complete their designs. The second project is a color lamp. The lamp changes its color according to the signals from the photocell sensors. And the uh, stop pedal is the first complex project. Uh, it utilizes a push button to turn on or turn off a DC motor. And an H-bridge chip and a 9-voltage battery are needed to control and power the motor. The second complex circuit is the thermometer. The temperature readings is on the display, and the rotary input module is used to adjust the contrast of the display. So with the help of auto uh this project can be completed like this. So this is the most co-communication project. Um, this is the color lamp project. This is the stump pedal project. And this is the thermometer project. So we get then 20 minutes for each project. During, a, uh, during the study, participants were not allowed to use the simulator to test or debug. This way, we were able to measure their confidence and correctness of their answers. Finally, we uh, collected the subjective ratings from them. So the following are the results. Uh, when using auto frees, most of the errors were from the stunt pedal projects. Two novices can, could not understand the importance of uh, H-bridge chip. Even auto frees suggest, suggested them to use it. Therefore, some basic understanding of circuit design is still needed for auto frees users. Uh, when auto freeze was not used, uh, some participants did not know how to power the DC motor or use the push button. They failed to complete the project. Uh, these issues, however, did not occur when auto freeze was used. According to our success rates, errors occurred in the freezing condition can be reduced with auto freeze. Only three completed circuits with auto freeze contain errors. Surprisingly, we see some experts make mistakes even with auto freeze because. Uh, they were so confident and ignored the suggestions, even they were actually unfamiliar with the components. As for the subjective ratings, the results of ANOVA analysis show that with the help of auto freeze, participants designed the circuit with lower mental effort, less prostration, and higher confidence. We also found novices and experts appreciated auto freeze from a different perspective. Novices feel they were like experts and feel really happy about that. On the other hand, experts like, like auto freeze because it saved the time for the tedious wiring project. Most of them uh, reported that auto freeze helpful. They tended to select one suggestion from auto freeze and then modify it later with the help of uh, online source project or by their own background knowledge. Finally, participants were confident about their initial answers with auto freeze. Uh, they, but there, were, there was a very interesting observation. In the beginning of the study, some participants did not trust our suggestions at all. But um, after they found the suggestions are consistent to the online source project, they became confident to utilize the system. So here we discuss the limitation of auto freeze and drop the conclusion of this paper. Currently, the tool does not validate the circuit design in real time. Uh, but uh, with the help of a circuit simulator in the future, it is possible to provide more useful suggestions. For example, suggesting component values or possible parameters. We regard this as an important future work. There are many projects which we haven't added into our database yet because they were from different project hubs and the project formats might not be the same. We hope that in the future, uh, with more projects in our database, we can provide users with more insightful autocomplete suggestions. So yeah, this is the conclusion. In this paper, we introduce you auto freeze, where we implemented four autocomplete suggestions, uh, which are module completion, module to module completion, wire connection completion, microcontroller units, or battery completion. So we found both novices and experts appreciate our system, and our system could reduce their time and effort. We hope that uh, with the help of the whole maker community, uh, in the future, we could further boost the usability of auto-freeze 
and uh, we can facilitate the circuit prototyping process for novices and expert users. Uh, thank you very much, and I'm happy to take your questions. So if you have any questions, raise your hand and we'll hand you a microphone. Yeah, thank you for a nice presentation. So my question is in regards to learning. Um, so after they got suggestions, were novices able to transfer learning to near tasks and or proximal tasks or far transfer for more distant or analogical tasks? But also uh, related to that is another question: Were they be becoming more thinking lazy? Um, you know, or, or were they getting better? Um, you know, they, were they getting addicted to your tool, or what was going on? So, as I just mentioned, uh, some participants did not trust our system in the beginning, right? So they will like uh, check a lot online resource project we provided them, and then carefully while then and uh, following the suggestions by the auto freeze. It's just like they are starting learning how to program, programming, right? So uh, in our study, we don't encounter such a question. Participants, especially for novices, they use our tools in a very careful way. And, uh, but uh, they also feel happy that uh, they can get some suggestions from our system. I don't know if I uh, answer your question correctly. I'll, I'll catch you later. OK. Hello. Um, thank you for your talk. My name is Tao Dong from Google. Um, I am curious if you observed any difference uh, between the two groups in terms of how diverse their solutions are. Uh, I wonder if using autocomplete would push participants into a similar design. Um, not sure if you observed anything related to that. So although they are like a simple or a complex project, but uh, we uh, define the level of difficulty based on the uh, novices, right? So for uh, experts, all four projects are actually relatively easy for them. But we still observe that uh, some experts in the beginning of the study, they didn't follow the instructions or suggestions of our system. For example, they started to build their own edge bridge from scratch. So it, uh, it took them a while that uh, they, re uh, they started to realize that uh, they can use the auto-free suggestions. And uh, I think it's a very interesting observation during the study. Um. Thank you. <laughs>